This is the latest top of the line Thunderbolt dock from Ugreen. It's an updated version of their RevoDock Max, this time with the latest Thunderbolt 5 capabilities for lightning fast data transfer speeds and compatibility with even the most advanced displays, all from a single cable to your device. It took around three years to go from Thunderbolt 4 to the new Thunderbolt 5 standard, with new Thunderbolt 5 docks like this just now coming onto the market as I film this in mid-2025, this is going to be cutting edge for some time to come. So if you want the latest and greatest in your desk, this is certainly one way to do just that. Now, Ugreen did send this over to me for review, but had no say in how I covered it. There's affiliate links in the video description if you wind up wanting one. And now, let's jump into those details. Starting with build and design, this solid metal box is made pretty much entirely of aluminum. It's a beautiful design with a dark silver look that Ugreen has been using across their lineup for some time now. Towards the back is a copper colored heatsink, though I believe it's actually still aluminum. Either way, it adds a pop of color and helps differentiate this new model from the previous Thunderbolt 4 version. The dock has small rubber feet on the bottom and on one of the sides, giving you two different options for orientations. It's a bit smaller in person than I expected, standing 5.9 inches tall, 2.4 inches wide, and going back a depth of 3.8 inches. It weighs just 794 grams, or about 1.75 pounds, so it's really not that heavy considering what an impressive piece of tech this is. Overall, you shouldn't have that much trouble finding space for this dock on your desk or finding some brackets to mount it below if you wish. For ports, Ugreen advertises this as a 13-in-1 solution. That breaks down to five USB-Cs, including your upstream port to your computer, four USB-As, one Ethernet, an SD card reader, a micro SD card reader, and a 3.5 millimeter combo audio jack. That's your 13, now let's talk about them in detail. Starting with the front of the device, you'll first find the power button on the top along with a power indicator light. As this device does get pretty warm even when not in use, you'll definitely want to turn this off anytime you're not actively using it. Beneath that are one USB-C and two USB-A ports, all capable of 10 gigabit per second data speeds. The front USB-C port can also provide 20 watts of power delivery, and like all the ports on this dock, it's capable of offline charging, so it doesn't require a host machine to be attached in order to provide power. As long as that power button is pressed, the ports will receive power. The USB-A ports on the front don't have specific charging specs stated by Ugreen, but were capable of charging an iPhone in testing. More to come on power overall in the next section, though. The slot labeled SD is naturally for your SD cards, and the TF slot is for TF cards, which you may know more commonly as microSD. These are UHS-2 4.0 card slots capable of 312 megabytes per second, and as we'll talk about soon, they are pretty darn fast in real-world testing. Finally, that 3.5 millimeter jack is for both headphones and or microphones. Moving to the back, you see two more USB-A ports. These are less capable than the front-facing ones, just 5 gigabit per second. The networking port is capable of 2.5 gig Ethernet, a welcome upgrade over a 1 gig port for either faster internet connections or for connecting to a remote storage solution, like maybe a Ugreen NAS. Beneath the Ethernet is the power port for the dock itself, which uses a barrel plug and receives power from a 180 watt power supply. And that leaves us with the final ports, the key ports on the whole device, the four top-of-the-line Thunderbolt 5 ports. The top one is upstream to your computer and provides up to 140 watts of power delivery to charge a laptop. I love that this port is on the back rather than the front or the side because it can make your desk setup a lot cleaner, having those permanent cables hidden in the back. The dock also comes with a Thunderbolt 5 cable in the box, which is high quality, but just 31 inches long, which needs to be a consideration with desk placement relative to where you'll keep your computer. The remaining Thunderbolt 5 ports in the back are all downstream, providing up to 80 gigabit per second each, enough for an 8K 30 hertz display, which is just crazy. Plus, these all support a new feature called Bandwidth Boost, which allows the dock to dynamically shift bandwidth between displays and data, taking unutilized bandwidth and reallocating it to provide up to an incredible 120 gigabit per second in one direction. For power, the top port of the three provides 30 watts, with the bottom two offering 15 watts each. This is an excellent setup with just about everything you could need for the vast majority of use cases. If I had your critique though, I'd say there may be too many USB-A ports. Even just swapping one on the front for a second USB-C would have been a nice change based on where the whole world is headed. Some people will definitely wish that there's 10 gig networking, 
but for most people, 2.5 gig is more than enough. Finally, perhaps the biggest challenge for some folks, especially if you're new to docks like this, is that there's no traditional display ports, only USB-C on the back. So you don't have any HDMI or display port if that's what you're used to. That does not mean though, that you have to invest in an expensive USB-C or Thunderbolt monitor in order to use this dock. Instead, you can just buy some great USB-C to HDMI or USB-C to DisplayPort cables like these ones from Ugreen, which will be perfect for your existing monitors. I'll link those in the video description if you wanna pick some up. Now let's talk about performance. First, with charging. You may have been tallying up those numbers along with me in the last section. 20 watts plus 140 watts plus 30 watts plus 15 plus another 15. Ultimately, it comes out to 220 watts and that's not including whatever the USB-A ports are capable of. However, you may also have caught the fact that the power supply that I have right here is only 180 watts. This means that you can't possibly get all of those power maximums simultaneously. However, to me, this is actually totally fine. First of all, most people will probably not hook up super power hungry devices to every single port. And even if they do, the dock is gonna negotiate the power accordingly and charge your devices with as much power as it can manage to distribute out. It is a bit perplexing why they wouldn't have just upped the power supply to one that could handle the maximum from all the ports, but it's not inherently a problem. The main benefit of those lower power capabilities is that the power supply isn't overly large and should be easy enough to stash underneath your desk the secondary benefit may actually be with heat. See, there's no active cooling on this device, which is nice because you don't have to worry about any annoying fan noises. However, that entire aluminum body acts as a heat sink to help dissipate the heat that it produces. In practice, it does get quite warm. Nothing super alarming, but it floats around the upper 90 degrees Fahrenheit during use and remains there pretty consistently. That's why I said earlier that you should definitely turn it off when not in use. Ultimately, this is the passive cooling doing its job, but it does mean that you'll want to ideally have this positioned somewhere that it can get at least a little bit of airflow to avoid any long-term implications from building up too much heat. On a desk, great. Underneath the desk, perfectly fine. In a cabinet, maybe not. I will call out though that Ugreen does have protections in place against overcurrent, overvoltage, all sorts of things that would prevent any sort of catastrophic issues. And I'll again reiterate that the temperatures were very consistent and were warm, but not dangerously high. And probably would have been worse if the included power supply was actually way more substantial. So having that lower power amount is probably a benefit. For data transfer, I tested some file migrations with my current M4 Pro MacBook Pro, and I was legitimately shocked by the performance. I'm certainly no expert in this stuff, so I'm always open to feedback about how I tested everything. Feel free to let me know. First, I wanted to test the SD card slot. To set a baseline, I transferred a six gigabyte file from an SD card directly to the card slot on my MacBook. This took one minute and six seconds. I then transferred the same file via the docs SD slot, and to my amazement, it completed in just 42 seconds, 36% faster. This continued in just regular real world use as I've been using this dock as an ingest station for my last several YouTube videos while testing it, and the uploads are notably faster than before, which is genuinely saving me time. After thinking about it, though I was a bit surprised, I figured there must just be a difference in the quality of the card reader on this compared to the one on my computer. So for my next test, I did a similar transfer, but this time I used a portable SSD, a Samsung T5 to be precise. Same file size, using the drive's included USB cable directly into the laptop, it took 15.5 seconds. Very fast and likely impossible to beat since it's going directly into the laptop's Thunderbolt port. Or so I thought at least. Running that exact same test via the Thunderbolt port on the back of the dock took just 11.2 seconds. Again, a huge improvement, in this case, 28% faster. This one legitimately broke my brain because when you're using this dock, it still winds up going through the same port on the laptop as when you connect it directly to that laptop port. So how does adding another step in the middle actually make it speed up the whole process? I don't know exactly. This result was genuinely surprising and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on the underlying mechanics at play here, if you have any. The best I've come up with is that there's some sort of optimization with the dock's USB controllers that is gaining some efficiency in the process. Regardless of how it happens, I am all for it. Next is display performance, which gets complicated and depends a ton on the specific computer that you connect. 
In testing with my M4 Pro MacBook Pro, I was able to successfully utilize dual 1440p external displays with my laptop's own display being an optional third one when left open. Two 1440p displays, one running at 60 hertz and one at 144 hertz, doesn't even come close to touching the maximum capabilities of this dock for context. That third Thunderbolt port on the back of the dock will not work with a third display based on Apple's limitations for current MacBook Pros. When three displays are connected, it will only work with the first two that you've connected. I also tested with an M2 Pro MacBook Pro, which had the same results. An older M1 MacBook Air, on the other hand, could only handle one display in testing. If you have one of these same Macs, your behavior should mirror mine. If you do not, it will vary based on your model. Windows machines, on the other hand, are typically a bit more flexible than Macs, but will depend on your specific GPU. The important thing is to research the capabilities and compatibility of your specific computer. Don't just assume that three Thunderbolt ports on the back means three external displays. Additionally, it's important to remember that everything matters when we're talking about this type of performance. Your computer, the cable connecting it to the hub, the hub itself, the cable connecting it to your device, and the device on the other end, be it a monitor, an SSD, or some other type of accessory. Every single piece in that chain needs to have enough capability to get you those maximum speeds and performance that we've discussed. So when you think about how many displays, for example, you can use, or how fast you'll be able to transfer things with this setup, you have to take all of that into account. But thankfully, this dock being on the bleeding edge of what's possible today, you can rest easy that this probably won't be the bottleneck for some time. Moving to value and pricing, a dock like this is an investment. The MSRP for this dock, whose official name is the Revo Dock Max 2131, is $400. Given that this is Thunderbolt 5 and that technology is the current cutting edge, this is and should remain one of the best dock options for several years. Ugreen does regularly run sales as well on all of their products, so you might be able to pick one of these up for even less if you time it right. The pricing is also competitive with some of the few Thunderbolt 5 docks that are available from other brands today. The Anchor TB5, for example, is listed for the exact same price, and this sits in between CalDigit's TS5 and TS5+. Plus. With more of these docks coming out regularly these days, this is a short list that will be out of date very fast if it's not out of date already. Overall, I think that this product from Ugreen is extremely competitive in this space and is an excellent option for work from home users seeking a one cable solution, for folks with super high end displays who wanna be able to max out those resolutions and refresh rates, professional content creators like me who work from a laptop and want a hub for ingesting data, managing displays and getting ethernet, or just for people who want a minimalist desk setup that's still highly capable. To recap the differentiators, I am a big fan of the simple design and the small size. This uses the latest Thunderbolt 5 capabilities, which means that it is one of the fastest and most capable docks in existence today. It has super fast data speeds that were faster in testing than plugging directly into the latest MacBook Pro, which is still crazy. There is a large selection of ports around the device. Specifically, there's those three downstream Thunderbolt 5 ports, which are highly capable, plus the upstream host port is on the back rather than the front to help with cable management. The Ethernet port is 2.5 gig, which is great. The USB ports are offline capable, so you don't need a host device plugged in for them to provide power. And finally, this is simple, but there is a power button to turn the dock off, which I like. For potential deal breakers, the biggest one has nothing to do with this Ugreen product specifically. It's just that docks like this are complicated, and it's easy to get mixed up about capabilities and compatibilities with devices, especially if you're slightly less tech savvy and you're just looking for an all-in-one system that works. That complexity is further challenged by the fact that docks like this are expensive because they're using the latest and greatest data transfer technology available in the market today. For this dock specifically, there's no traditional display ports, which means you may need some additional cables to make it work. There's arguably too many USB-A ports, though only you can be the real judge of that. There's plenty of power throughput to your host device, 140 watts, but not that much power to the other ports, which could be a limiting factor in some use cases. Despite that low overall power to the device, it still gets quite warm during regular use. Finally, I didn't have a good spot to mention this earlier, but it can actually make a little bit of strange sounds. The best example of this is when I scrub a timeline in my editing software DaVinci Resolve, it makes this strange sound.
Overall, it's weird, but it's quiet, so it's not a huge deal. There's a lot of things to consider before pulling the trigger on one of these docks. But if you think this will meet your needs and none of those potential deal breakers scare you away, this is a really great purchase. I've been super happy with having this on my desk during testing, and even though Ugreen sent this over to me for review, now that I've experienced it, I'd buy one myself in a heartbeat. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.